So then, uh, <laughs> basically, um, uh, that was the case, and Frank makes them kind of strong. We only had one drink. We're just all feeling good, so now it's time to go out. So we go down. We're on the 10th floor of the Hard Rock Hotel. We're all, you know, giddy and having fun, and we open up the, the doors open. There's Dana and Tom, his bodyguard. And so, uh, hold you know, on, hold on. Tom's his bodyguard? Yeah, that's his security guy, Frank. Oh, I don't know that. He's an ex, uh, ex Las Vegas PD. Like, oh, I have no idea. Yeah, he's retired. The last time I saw him, he was cuffing uh, Chuck Zito in the back when they pulled him out of a show one time because he violated not reporting it being a felon coming into Vegas, but that's an old story. Uh, so anyway, um, we walk in the elevator, and, you know, we're all, hey, Dana, how you doing, this, that, and the other. And I, I kind of forget what Frank was talking to him about, but I got in the way of Frank because Dana had this watch on. It was just, it was a band. And I, I was I'm, basically begging for a job, Bruce. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, yeah, you were talking, it's, it's time to put me back in the octagon, you know, and, and that's true. I, I kind of interrupted that moment, and that's not a good thing. But um, So anyway, I, my shoulder must have been blocking Frank's view or something because I'm looking at Dana's watch, and, all of a sudden, I, you know, Frank gave me a nice ridge hand, if I remember correctly, right to my throat, you know, basically the base of my throat. And that's, you know, that's a big no-no. You don't, you don't do that under normal circumstances, but Jesus, I'm an announcer. You know, that's kind of like the area I've got to be careful about. That's your moneymaker, right? Yeah, that's my moneymaker. So I remember I turned around and go, Frank, you fucking hit me. Why'd you hit me? And, I, and if I remember correctly, and again, Frank, you can correct me, but it, Frank said the wrong thing to me anyway. It was more like, what are you going to do about it? Well, oh, shit. Pretty much right. Yeah. So I got Dana looking, Tom's looking, Goldberg's over there. And Goldberg knows that, you know, I'll throw if I have to. So it's like the adrenaline hit the top. And I came back about 50% and hit Frank once or twice, you know, in the midsection. And then Frank <laughs> came back at me. And then I go back at Frank. And just like any good friendly thing, it escalated to the point where now Frank's throwing some power behind his punches. And I'm sure he's going to say, I threw power behind mine. So. We're having a fun go, and it's boom, boom, boom. The doors are closing. Now we got ten floors. And I listened to the interview. Frank, you said it was like four seconds, but you know what? It was actually the whole length of the elevator ride. Ten floors, bro. And so we how were just, long that took, then? It fucking was a long-ass time. <laughs> it was a long-ass time. So, you know, Frank's getting his shots in. I'm getting my shots in. We're blocking each other. You know, Dana and Goldberg and Tom, when, you, when I looked to the brief second to the left, are peeled against the wall of the elevator watching this happen. And as a matter of fact, Frank, I was just in Ireland, and Dana, out of the blue, relayed the story to Lorenzo. He's still <laughs> excited about the story. Well, I'm glad at least he's talking about me still. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, he's keeping track of your fights, bro. So then, oh, and that's not good. I'm <laughs> so, then, so we keep going and going, and I thought, Frank, i got to be honest with you, I thought you were going to try and catch me in the head, so I was waiting for it because, bro, I was going to come at you, and then we were really going to have, have fun. So then, um, <laughs> if that's what you call it. Yeah, if that's what, well, you know what, it was fun, Frank. I, I enjoyed it, and except that when we got to the bottom, and we got to the bottom, I mean, Frank kind of came at me. I, I think it was like a knee. It caught me like I'm part of my, one of my nugs. Damn, yeah. you guys are throwing knees? I did. He did. Let me tell you something. I turned Look, my it wasn't head. like I didn't start throwing power bombs. At least I didn't think I was throwing power bombs until both sides of my rib cage touch each other. <laughs> Bruce hit me so hard in the stomach, I thought I was going to shit myself. Well, I, I did a lot of kickboxing, and I've had, I've had a lot of rows, but I was never a pro. You know, I was just a, a gym rat and just, you know, taking smokers and stuff like that. But I loved it. You know, I just, I, I just always loved to fight as a kid. So it kind of brought back, you know, my adrenaline pumped. I felt like I was in my 20s again. So then um, uh, I turned my hip, and I remember catching part of it because it was a delayed, you know, that great delayed reaction when you get hit in the nugs. And then uh, it was like we slowed down, and then I, I slipped my arm underneath Frank's neck, and, and the door was opening up. And I don't think Frank expected this. I'm not going to say that I caught him, okay? It's just I went in to get it. And then I said, okay, we're done, we're done, we're done. So we stopped. But then I looked down at my shirt, and I've got like this $400 shirt on, and there's blood, you know, like a good three and a half, four inches of blood stain on my shirt. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I looked down at my finger, and my knuckles peeled. Bit. Frank, you could have seen, memory, Frank, you could see the bone. Yeah, it was peeled all the way back. Muscle yeah. and everything peeled all the way back on his thumb knuckle. All the way back. So the way, I think, you know, Frank and I are just like patting each other on the back. Hey, that was fun. And Dana's laughing. And the best thing for me was just look, the look on Dana's face because I just, you know, it's good. Now he knows that definitely there's not a pussy announcing his fighters in the octagon, exactly, right? Exactly, man. You got some cojones. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. I mean, who wants to be labeled, a, you know, a pussy? And not only that, Trigg stated that you just kind of looked down at your hand and said, well, I'm going to go to the hospital. I mean, like, no big deal. You weren't crouched over. You weren't, you know, no. playing. 
No, if anything, I was kind of bummed because I was getting ready to go out and try and do what we all try to do in Vegas, which, you know, you can just put any words in my mouth. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. You, you know, most of us try to do what we try to do in Vegas. We don't bring the hottest chicks in when we do this. <laughs> like, like, like ch- check this out. This is what Buffer does. He'll bring in, like, two really hot models. One is kind of dating but not really sure, and the other one's just like her friend. And if it doesn't work out between those two super hot models, he picks up a hotter chick than them just because they're around. It's Remember, like, guys. There's three things you always would like to be with in a room of women. Right. A, another woman. B, a dog. C, a baby. Okay? It allows you to contact the opposite sex really easy. When you're with a hot chick or just a, a girl that's on your arm that carries herself well, girls will pay more attention to you than when you're standing there with your buddies all breaking down beers and looking like the frat group that just entered the room. All right, it's, so it's another con- woman, I think that's common knowledge. Another woman, a dog, and a baby. Yeah, not at the same time, but they all work. But you got to make sure you can bring the baby home. Give someone else to take care of it so you can go out with the girl you just met. Hey. <laughs> In my case, I have a godson. So and Frank knows Frank knows the, the mother of my godson. She, he's met Kristen, and yeah. he's my ex-girlfriend. And uh, So, you know, I'll go walking with Henry and then, you know, take him home to his mom and then go back out again. Damn. But That's i got I got to settle down, guys. I've had too much fun in my life. It's not that I don't want to have more fun, but let me get back to the story. So anyway, um, yeah, Frank's right. I mean, you know, I've, I've, listen, I've had stitches more times than I can remember. It's just, it's, it's just the nature of the beast. So then I feel, okay, I peel back my thumb. What am I going to do, cry, look at it, and wiggle my nose like bewitched, and all of a sudden my thumb's regular again? It's not going to happen. I've got to get it taken care of. So I go, there are no problems. There's only solutions. That's a big theory of mine. Hey. So I go to the paramedics that were just at the show, and they're like, you know, Bruce, what the hell did you do? I said, well, just, you know, glue it, tape it, just whatever. I want to go out. They go, we can't. You've got to go to the hospital. You've got to get stitches. So now I go to the hospital. I get in the hospital. There's nobody there. I go, they put me in the triage, and I'm hearing my voice in the next room. And I'm like, what the heck? They're watching the repeat of the Spike show. So now the doctor comes in. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a clipboard. Because God is my witness. He looks up. And he does a double take, and he says, what the hell are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. So I told him the brief story. He got a big laugh out of it. You know, and then Trigg, he, he said, you're one of his favorite fighters, too. He goes, Frank Trigg, you're kidding. I said, yeah. He's a guy who me up about four or five times in that hospital. <laughs> probably, yeah, he probably stitched you up. So then um, $500, five stitches later, I get a, like a, a big wrap on my thumb. I go back to the hotel. I change my shirt. I come down. I think I saw you. Did I, Frank? Did I see you in the bar? Or did you already go home? No, I took off. You saw me the next morning. You were you were actually heading to rehab. Trist. No, I went to Trist. Oh, Trist. Oh, that no, no, morning. Yeah, morning. that morning I went to rehab and I party with Chuck Liddell and some people. Yeah. So then, um, but that night I went to Trist, and I was at Trist, and there uh, Joe Rogan and Eddie Bravo uh, were there, and um, they obviously, as usual, you know, had some girls around them, and there was uh, one lone wolf. There was this real tall blonde from Arizona, just real, real pretty. Don't you mean a one lone cougar? <laughs> oh. However you want to call it, baby. They all got fur. So hey, 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 anything over 21 is a cougar to Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I met the girl, and, you know, kissy, kissy, lovey, lovey, and, you know, all, all the night chunks. And now think about this, guys. I announced the UFC. There's 5,000 guys out there right now that want to put a bullet in my brain just to get my, my job. And I know that. But, you know, that's my, that's my office. Stay away. That's right. Or get in an elevator and we'll work it out. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, I do that. I get the best seat in the house, thank God, which is always a pleasure to be at these great shows. Trigg and I get into a friendly row in the elevator in front of the owner of the UFC, Dana White. Got to love that. Dana appreciated it. Great respects. So, you know, I, I love that. Then I go get some stitches. Then I go out to a club, meet a beautiful girl, suck a little face, have a lot of fun, and I had a good meal in the process. That's like a 14 parlay you hit. You know what? I could auction this night off on eBay, I think, for at least 10 to 20 foul to a fan with money. And along the way, you confirmed what Vernon Tiger said, that Chug was in rehab. 